what's going on guys welcome back to some more band of brothers we are here today to watch episode two okay so last episode man i did not expect band of brothers to get this kind of reception on the channel i i never do when it comes on to um tv shows and anything that i watch for that matter on the channel I never really expect too much because it's usually like, I want to say probably around a third of my subscribers. I don't know about new viewers, but I know about probably about a third of my subscribers will probably watch that show. Um, because between the anime community, TV, TV community on the channel, um, it just goes, it goes to, to that place where I'm like, okay, I'm going to expect probably around... 100 to 200 views it may get to 300 right so um so yeah we're gonna take a look at band of brothers again today hopefully we can get through this entire thing um this entire only season because it's like a mini series um so gonna try to get through another episode today last episode you guys man you guys taught me a lot so many people answered my question about what really caused um, the attack on Pearl Arbor I really do appreciate you guys for taking the time to type that out in the comment section man really appreciate that really do appreciate that um, because you know there's history and then there's history <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because you might hear something that might not even be so. You know what I'm saying? So if you do if you do the research, you might get one explanation, then somebody might go a little bit deeper into understanding what really happened and stuff like that. So I really do thank you guys for taking the time out to type that out. And to let me know what really happened. And, you know, some people, it was very um, simple explanation. Some people, it was more elaborate um, and stuff like that. And I really do appreciate that. So, it gave me a, um, a gist of what really happened or what took place. Why did, why Japan decided to go after the U.S. So, I really do appreciate that. Um... Another thing, all the actors that you guys have told me about, uh, Michael Fassbender, um, you guys said I would notice um, the other dude, the dude that asked, was saying that um, Sobu um, hates them. <laughs> I, I noticed these actors, some of them I don't know their names. I know I didn't notice Michael Fassbender. Though. You guys said he's the guy that got sent back up sent back up the hill by himself um you guys said james mcavoy too is is um is in is in was in episode one got the canteen you guys said um the one with the empty canteen canteen i don't he he, he didn't look like him <laughs> for real i know who james mcavoy is but he sure as hell looked different in a way or maybe it's because he had hair <laughs> I don't know, but I notice a lot of the other, the other guys, man. Um, so we're gonna jump into this episode. Last episode, we got to see the um, Soba get dismissed from from leading, um, from leading the the um, not the division, but that b battalion specifically in the, in the airborne division. Um, and now we got um. I can't remember his name right now, but you guys know who I'm talking about, okay? So, he's gonna be basically leading the troops because, man. But the thing that really got me the most was the fact that these guys could get shot at any minute for doing, you know. I didn't even know that, to be honest. I I never knew that you could just get, they, they could just shot you on, shoot you on spot for doing some crazy thing like in the army if you desert and stuff like that like that's crazy and they're like oh i don't want to be in the army anymore they could just shot you they could just 
sentence you to death just shoot you on spot <laughs> it's like what you're like you're like um you're dead weight now <laughs> you're dead weight we gotta get rid of the dead weight man anyways man we're gonna jump into this episode i know you guys enjoyed watching um the first episode with me because it was it was a funny episode it was a funny episode so um to you know but it, it was also have this serious tone to it at at the same time because you know they're heading into war and know that they're heading into war but at the same time they made it so funny because david Schrimmer, like i can't as i said i cannot take him serious in any role that he does because he plays pretty much every role the same way so he has zero range to him he just has a comedic face that i can't not laugh at <laughs> you know so thank you guys so much for tuning in remember to like the video go watch the episode come back here for the review i'll have that for you i'll see you guys there all right guys welcome back to the review episode two of band of brothers and i have to say man this it got really intense there i knew it was gonna but you know talk about the technical aspects first i mean the 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 way how it was shot the way the the camera work everything about that episode was absolute perfection in my opinion they did an extremely good job when it comes on to portraying what war is, or, you know, what it was like back then, you know, going in the trench from the landing, you know, them getting separated and getting back together and, you know, going against an enemy that you're not even, you, you, you're not exactly sure you know how many they can't scout it's not like today where they have all this technology where they can scout an area before they can be a lot more effective um to do things like back then they had to depend on basically analog stuff you know nothing digital you know analog they get all their data from analog stuff like maps you know paperwork and you know radio um analog radio and stuff like that so if those if those things are out of commission you're basically going in blind you know not knowing what you're going to encounter you might know that there's enemy there but you don't know how many you know what i'm saying and them going to take those guns was pretty pretty awesome as i said man the sound effects everything about the episode was was perfectly done i had zero problems with being immersed into what they were trying to portray like you know i felt like i was there <laughs> you know what i'm saying i know you guys are probably looking at my face like man this could look like he's in a trance <laughs> you know but that's how i felt man that's why i said it's very easy to get immersed into into a world like that because number one you knew it you knows that it it happened for real right you knew it happened for real and number two right number two i lost my train of thought because somebody just came into the house and the alarm the alarm took forever to take took off take off the alarm anyways yeah so i i, I completely lost my train of thought but what, what was i saying god anyways let's move on <laughs> let's move on um maybe i'll go back and see what I was saying and then put it in the comment section. I don't remember. I completely lost my train of thought. Anyways, um They lost the dude, the dude, the dude that landed that um with Winters. He's the one that died. I thought it was the dude with the brass knuckles kinda of look like him, but it's not him, it's it's Hall, the guy that asked him to go with him. Um they still can't find the lieutenant who's supposed to be in charge of the unit. They can't find him. At this point, he got to, um, he's got to be presumed dead. Like, you know, where is he? You know what I'm saying? How far did he, did he die in a plane? 
You know what I'm saying? Was he on the plane with him? Was he one of them that was supposed to jump with him on that plane that Winters was on? I don't think so. I think he was on another plane. Um, so that opening scene was was brutal. Them inside the plane, them getting hit. Um, it, it was brutal, man. And it's just one of those things that you're like, man. If I was there, I, knowing my luck, <laughs> knowing my luck, I probably would have been in one of those planes that got hit or got hit before I hit the ground or something. I mean, this is this, this is crazy, man, to know that stuff like this was happening in the world. And, you know, you read about it in books. You know what I'm saying? You read about this stuff in books, World War One, World War Two, and you're like, you know, there's no way, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But yes, way, this did happen in real life. And, you know, it, it just goes to show you that have we become better? You know, have we become better? And I really do. I, I think we've gotten better to the point as, you know, humankind I think I think we are fighting less, but at the same time, now you have the uprising of terrorists, people bombing places for new for no reason. We have school shootings. We have all of these things that we got that still we're still dealing with, and it's like, what is wrong with humankind? You know what I'm saying? And that's why when I hear people say say stuff, certain things, it pisses me off because I'm like, everybody has a choice. Stop blaming other stuff. It's just like how it came out in the news the other day. They were trying to blame video games for school, for school shootings. And I'm like, are you serious right now? 99% of the people that play video games don't go out trying. If if we if we were all trying to do that, because I play video games too, and I play Call of Duty. So, and most of, the, most of the games that I play, they have gunplay, they have violence in them. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not thinking, oh, I'm going to take up a gun and go see, if, you know, if Call of Duty is in real life. You know what I'm saying? So to say that is is a bit naive and stupid. And it's, you know, it comes off as propaganda. And you have some of the people that really do believe that there's that, you know, what I'm saying that video games is the cause of school shootings. Or or shootings for that for mass shootings, for that matter. You really do have people that think that. Like on the real, for real, for real. Like no mental illness, no nothing. They really do believe that it contributes to it. And I'm like, nah, man. That is a conscious choice that somebody that somebody has to make. You cannot blame um, a medium. Hey, too much of anything is, is too much. You get what I'm saying? But I still don't think... That somebody who's who sit down and plays Fortnite all day is going to make that choice to go see if that shit would work in real life. You get what I'm saying? Because they understand that real life is real life. A video game is a damn video game. It's fantasy. You get what I'm saying? I'm not envisioning myself in, in real life trying to kill people. Like, thinking that they're going to respawn. Come on. You know what I'm saying? Um, we're, we're talking about grown people doing this. Grown people. You know what I'm saying? It's not, we're not having six, seven-year-olds going into malls, shooting up malls, going into schools, shooting up schools. That is not what we're having. We're having grown-ass people in their 20s, you know what I'm saying, late teens, whatever, even, you're talking about grown people who have been around for a while, okay? So it can't be that, man. It just, it just can't be that. You know, so when it comes on to this, man, I really do appreciate what they're trying to show here, because I think people should should watch this show and realize that this this is not it doesn't have to be like this. You know what I'm saying? And if say, for instance, World War Three comes around, you know, the, the, the balance of power, which is. You know, every, you know, major countries having nukes. That's what's keeping everybody in check. Because, you know, <sighs> I tell you guys, it's, it's really one of those things where I'm looking around and it just, it, it just goes to show you that 
things you want things to get better and you want it to be you want everybody to be at peace everybody to 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 live and and, and, and just we could uh, it's not a kumbaya moment or anything like that it's just that you just want peace man you just want everybody i want to be able to to sit down and meet and talk to anybody of any religion of uh, of anything and there's no animosity even before i start talking you get what i'm saying like i don't have i i've had conversations with plenty of different people in this world when it comes on to religion when it comes on to beliefs you know what i'm saying when it come when it comes on to we talking about ethnicities i'll probably talk to somebody of every ethnicity in the world but it's just those things are stuff that i that i really want to do i want to travel the world and talk to other people man see what their their life is like you get what i'm saying just get to know people and, and help people to understand that there's better because some people in the world don't know that there is better in the world they just don't know they don't know that there's better out there they don't know you know what i'm saying not everybody has a tv to see how you know what I'm saying? See how, and then again, some people are living in a situation where it's just pure propaganda that happens on TV. All they see is stuff, you know, brainwashing stuff. You know what I'm saying? Some people has never seen what we see or have the kind of freedom that we have to sit down and watch a band of brothers or to, you know, to watch any TV shows or anime or whatever the situation. They don't have that kind of freedom, right? or they're living in extreme poverty so it's thank you guys so much for tuning in man this this one was really one of those reflective episodes where, where you can really look at it and be like man we've come a long way but also have a long way to go so thank you guys for tuning in remember to like remember to comment down in the comment section let me know what you thought of episode two of Band of Brothers, the first time you saw it. Subscribe if you're new. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Support Terabyte Reacts. Peace.